With its white sand beaches, clear waters, and luxurious mansions, Miami is a top tourist destination. But this coastal paradise, built barely two meters above sea level, is now under threat. Because of ice melt in Greenland and Antarctica, we already have um, sea levels rising in South Florida at a rate of over two feet per century. And it's accelerating. And you can drive all over Miami Beach, these islands, the western part of Miami, the western part of, of Broward County where Fort Lauderdale is. And these are uh, all areas that are less than six feet deep. Local authorities have been fighting rising sea levels by rebuilding beaches and elevating homes. For Harold Vanless, these are just short-term fixes that will only delay the inevitable. You can see some new buildings over there putting in slightly higher seawalls. South Florida is on a very, very porous limestone. So uh, as sea level rises, you can build all the walls you want, but we can't play the Netherlands or New Orleans. The water will come right under. Waters around Miami rose by about 15 centimeters in the past 25 years. That means high tides regularly flood the streets, but it has not stopped new construction on the beachfront. At some point, people are going to realize. You know, I would guess by the middle part of the century, people will be afraid to live near the ocean. But it'll be too late because you won't be able to sell. Rising sea levels will likely impact coastal properties. The Joshes lived in this house for 16 years before selling it in 2020 for fear that it would lose value. That wall you see there becomes black. And the reason for that is because the water goes all the way at high tide and full moon, it goes all the way up and the humidity stays there. When I moved here, this was at least a meter under. I would say an average of one centimeter a year, for sure it's been rising, to a point that uh, you don't feel comfortable of living in, 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 in a house on the water. The couple chose reason over their dream house. They now live in a building 10 meters above sea level and they were able to sell their house at market value to buyers less aware of the lingering threat. If we had sold to locals, it would have been much harder. But because of COVID and the nightmare that they lived in New York, we had a lot of people from New York moving here who are absolutely not aware of the rising waters because nobody lives underwater in New York. Besides rising sea levels, global warming is also causing bigger and more frequent hurricanes. In the past decade, six Category 4 hurricanes or higher have struck the U.S. That has pushed insurance companies to hike up their prices. The Joshes used to pay about $25,000 a year to protect their home. Today, it would cost them nearly three times more. The new owners are paying $67,000. And the reason for that is uh, that the assessment of danger of hurricane and rising waters by the insurance company made them, uh, uh, some of them bailed out of the market of Florida in general, some other bailed out of the market of waterfront houses, and um, of course less competition, higher prices, and also more risk, so they need to have more money coming in. Insurance companies aren't the only ones keeping an eye on rising sea levels. Developers are also investing in areas further inland and with a higher elevation, upending the real estate market in historically low-income neighborhoods like Little Haiti, a phenomenon known as climate gentrification. Little Haiti will be less impacted by the rising sea levels. People who have the means and the information already know that, and so this adds to the already existing demographic pressure on the neighborhood. It's becoming harder and harder to survive here. Demand is skyrocketing, and when demand increases, prices increase too. Climate gentrification has only reinforced the traditional gentrification of the neighborhood, which started several decades ago. As a result, the Haitian community is being priced out of its historic neighborhood. Bonjour. Hello. Comment are you? Hello, sir. How's it going? Good, good. All good? That's good to hear. Okay. This shopkeeper has run this small store for 18 years, but his rent has recently tripled. A lot of people have had to leave. 
My neighbor at number 35, he moved about two months ago because he couldn't do it anymore. I've been here longer. I have regulars, but I still have to encourage customers to come and keep buying by telling them I'll give them the third one for free if they buy two. Recently, it feels like I'm just working more and more to make just enough to pay my rent. Pushing the poorest residents out of Miami won't be enough to escape rising sea levels. Experts say 60% of Miami could be underwater by 2060. And while elevated buildings might be spared, roads and sewage systems will be flooded, turning this paradise into a nightmare for authorities and residents alike.